Hey guys, so today it's all about Jupiter as you already know and Jupiter is a very interesting planet. Um, it's a massive, really very very big planet. It has around uh, 2.5 times the mass of all other planets combined in our solar system and it consists mainly of 90% hydrogen and 10% helium. And it's the planet with the fastest uh, rotation speed or period uh, of around 10 hours. And as you also saw, there's a so-called Great Red Spot, which is uh, very famous for this planet, as you maybe already know. And this storm exists for at least 360 years now. And the period of this storm is around six Earth days. But did you recognize something? Um, so the picture on the left hand side uh, was produced or captured by this spacecraft, the Voyager 1 spacecraft in 1979. And the picture on the right hand side of my left side <laughs> Uh, was produced by the Cassini spacecraft in 2020. So more than 40 years between one sequence and the other. So, and did you recognize something? The great red spot shrinks. And it does not only shrink, um, it also um, becomes more circular. So in the 1970s and 80s, it looked very oval. And in the 2020s or earlier, it looked more uh, circular. And it was calculated that if this conversion uh, stays the same, in 2040, uh, this great red spot will um, become completely circular. Now we saw two sequences of Jupiter created by the Voyager 1 uh, spacecraft and Cassini spacecraft. But um, there are also other very, very interesting facts about uh, Jupiter. And I will talk about uh, one or two more by analysis of NASA's um, Jupiter spacecraft Juno. It was found that those uh, bands around Jupiter um, can have a depth of around 3,000 miles into the atmosphere of Jupiter. It's really interesting. And the rest uh, of Jupiter, let's call it core, stays, yeah, or behaves like a solid. It's not really a solid. So speaking about the core of Jupiter, as far as we know so far, there's no real solid core inside Jupiter. So as I said before, it consists mainly of hydrogen and helium. And this is very interesting. So maybe you remember your physics class. There was a so-called phase diagram. Maybe you remember this. So what you have here is two axes, right? On the y-axis, you have the pressure and on the x-axis you have the temperature. So from left to right the temperature is increasing and from the bottom to the top the pressure is increasing. And there are many interesting uh, things happening when you're increasing um, temperatures and pressures um, of gas and gases. Um, one thing is called the triple point and um, at the triple point, you have all the th all three uh, phases um, possible. I mean, there is also another thing possible, but let's say you have at this triple point, you will have uh, a solid, you will have a liquid, and you will have a gaseous, gaseous phase. That's very interesting. 
But what's happening inside Jupiter is that you will reach the supercritical point. That means you cannot distinguish anymore between liquid and gas. And this is really interesting. And here from the Technical University of Dresden, Germany, I can show you a short video how this looks like. So here you cannot see hydrogen and helium, but CO2. So when you increase the temperature and the pressure, it becomes supercritical. And this, yeah, of course, changes uh, the physical um, properties in this phase, but it also produces some nice visual effects. So I think now I talked enough about Jupiter and interesting facts about Jupiter. There are many more. Uh, what I want to do today is I want to capture Jupiter using my 127 Maxutov telescope and my new CWO AZ385MC color camera, which I talked about uh, last time. And yeah, I will not only show you how I captured uh, Jupiter, I also want to show you how you can do post processing. So have fun! freezing. It's minus five degrees Celsius. But I think you can see something here. Jupiter. Oh, Jupiter is behind some trees. Or one tree and that's enough. So it's coming and going. But now this looks good. I was a little slow with the whole setup and yeah, I selected the wrong star for alignment. <laughs> uh, too many factors together, but I learned a lot uh, today. I really learned a lot. Now it's the first time I try a Barlow lens, a 2.25 fold Barlow lens on Jupiter. So let's see how this will work. Oh, Jupiter is coming back. Here it is. Yes, 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 yes. I can see some bands.
All right, so I created some nice videos of Jupiter and it went very well after I made my mistakes and uh, I learned a lot this night. So everything's okay. So I've got some good material, I think, to work with, with the post-production. And the only problem is that in January, so now it's January 2022, uh, in my location, Jupiter is very low in the night sky, very low. And there's another problem, maybe that's the biggest problem. Um, I have many, many trees here. So maybe I can show you just shortly what I mean. So as you can see, um, yeah, I have a very limited um, yeah, view of the night sky from my location at the moment when I'm not traveling or something, when I'm really doing this uh, from my yeah, backyard, let's say. And, yeah. and then it's uh, not so easy to capture Jupiter because it's coming and going. Uh, I always have to, yeah, to make a movie or to capture Jupiter when it's not behind any trees or something. But in the end, um, everything went well and now I've got some material, as I said. So let's post process my material. First, I captured a video or yeah, not just one, maybe one or two. I think I captured one or two movies of Jupiter. Uh, as you can see here, maybe. <laughs> So now I have a SER file and you can open this with a SER uh, file player or it's called SER player. Yeah. And so here you can see yeah, quite a nice uh, movie of Jupiter. Um, you also can see bands here and yeah, of course, uh, turbulences <laughs> of the atmosphere and so on, but it looks quite nice so it's not moving and so on and yeah I think uh, this is something we can work with. So what you do is you open um, Auto Stackard and then you just drag and drop your file here to open it and here on the right hand side you can see uh, every single frame of this movie. Okay. I just make it very short here. Uh, I will not go into any detail here. So you go to planet and then you press analyze. So the program now will analyze, analyze this data or this movie and will analyze each and every frame of this movie. So as you can see here, um, you have the quality graph let's say, and you have just a few, uh, let's say 20% or 25% of very good um, yeah, pictures, single pictures in this, movies and, in this movie and the rest 75% or something uh, is not so good. So I would highly recommend to re not to do stacking with 100%. Uh, of your frames, but too limited. Um, let's try 20. I think uh, that's something you can play with. And let's say 20 for this example. And then you press place a P grid. And let's make some more. All right. I mean, that's just a principle, right? So, okay. 
let's do it like this and then you just press stack and in the end you will get a yeah, final stacked image of your movie all right it just finished um, now you can open your file there will be an extra or a new uh, folder here and yeah you can open the file and check your result and i think this looks already quite nice so you can clearly see um, really the bands here you have no strange colors or something and yeah so i think um, you can really go further with processing of this um, stacked image so what you then do is you open Registacks. This is for this is a tool for sharpening and yeah denoising. Let's say you just drag and drop your file here, maximize this, and here on the right hand side uh, you have yeah some tools. Let's say. And here on the left hand side, you have the sharpening and denoise um, section, let's say. So what I usually start with is the RGB align. So what you do is you, you make a square or let's say you uh, make this square bigger that your whole planet is covered let's say and then you just press estimate and now the software just um, aligned the red green and blue channels to each other right and as you can see here um, in the x position for example the red channel was um, yeah one pixel off and this is the correction also for others for blue and also for x and the uh, y position okay and this usually works quite nice then you can go to the rgb balance okay a new window opens and then you can do or press auto balance yeah let's reset for me it looks a little yeah very white very bluish and when you press uh, auto balance um, yeah maybe it looks a little too orange but let's leave it like this for for this um, example here all right but you can play around with uh, with the different tools and so on here but the most important uh, section of this uh, software is the sharpening and denoise uh, section here on the left hand side so what you actually do when you have a quite fast uh, machine PC, uh, you use a linked wavelength. That means, um, so now this is one layer of sharpening and denoise, right? So what you do is you do sharpening, or you set, you set sharpening values here, and then you just play around with this slider here and as you can see maybe it's sharper but you also introduce some noise and to counteract this uh, noise generation you use this denoise and you actually play around with both values right so the sharpening and the denoise so now I think it looks much better and what is meant by this use linked wavelengths is um, if you do the same here and the, and the second one and you play around with it that means if you change something here it multiplies with this one and this actually um, really needs some uh, computational power I would say and you can also do this and should do this maybe with the, with the other um, slider here and so on. If you have a quite uh, slow PC, maybe that's something you can try, just try. Uh, then maybe I would not use the, wing, wa uh, w the linked wavelength.
So if you have a quite slow PC, I would not use this. And then I would maybe deselect the use linked wavelength. But in principle, and as I heard from at least two guys who are really doing excellent uh, pictures of um, different planets, they all use this use linked wavelength. So I would highly recommend if possible uh, to use this. And what you then do is you just uh, play around with these values, right? What you also can do is you can save and load uh, different schemes, right? So I did uh, some of them in advance for another picture. I mean, of course, it, it depends on your picture, right? Which, uh, yeah, maybe how aggressive you have to be with the sharpening and the denoise and so on. But just play around with it and yeah. And another thing uh, which is quite nice here, you can do uh, flip and rotate. So you just use this slider here with your mouse and you can rotate the whole planet. Uh, yeah, as much as you like. <laughs> What's important here is to press when you have finished this, um, to press do all before uh, saving. And then you just press save image. And yeah, that's it. You can save it as a TIFF or whatever. I think it's really crazy how powerful Registax is, I think. So for sharpening and denoising, it's really unbelievable what you can achieve uh, with. So we started with this a stacked image and I just played around for, with this for maybe two minutes or something and then you can get this. And if you really take your time and so on and you can really produce really great images. So yeah. So what you also can do of course is further processing in Photoshop or in GIMP or whatever. So this was very short, I know. This was just to give you an idea about the principle and yeah, how, how to process your movie in AutoStacker and in Registacks. And yeah, just play around with the values and so on. Uh, you can really improve your, um, your images with this. And yeah, that's all, I think. And now I will show you my final image of Jupiter. Okay, so this was my first time capturing uh, Jupiter and also my first time um, trying to do the post-processing and registax. Um, I think it turned out quite nice. Uh, of course, I can see a uh, room for improvement and there will be uh, improvement, but so far I'm really happy. So if I can do this, you can do this. <laughs> As I already said in one of my last videos, um, thank you for watching. Uh, I really like how this uh, channel is developing. And yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for commenting. Um, yeah, and I already did, spoiler, <laughs> I already did uh, some um, yeah, deep sky imaging using my new camera. Um, yeah, and this is, video is, um, I already finished this video. And yeah, so don't miss it, miss it. And uh, maybe subscribe to my channel if you like this and don't want to miss this. And yeah, thank you and see you next time. Clear skies.